Time after time, Uthman has spoken to them, Ali has spoken to them, the Sahaba have spoken to them, they're not able to understand anything that's taking place. They didn't believe him and they didn't accept. خلاص, in their mind, they want to cause fitna. And then it is mentioned after this that the rebels, they came and they took over Medina. But what we know is that the number of people in Medina was low. And these people, they came in at a time of people were least expecting. They took out their weapons and they entered into Medina. And they took control of Medina. No one's allowed to take out their weapons. No one's allowed to do anything. They took control of the streets. They took control of the masjid. And their main call now was to what? We do not want Uthman. We are not leaving until Uthman relieves himself. This is the only thing they wanted. All the companions who were in Medina at that time, Talha, Zubair, Ali radiallahu anhu, Abu Huraira, all these companions who were there at that time and many more, they all agreed that Uthman radiallahu anhu should not relieve himself of Khilafah. So even though there were some companions who said, yani maybe you should leave Medina, go to Mecca. Or you should try and negotiate. But the majority of the companions were agreed that what? That there is no way that you can take away the Khilafah. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he enters upon Uthman radiallahu anhu during the siege. And he tells him, if you give it up, are you going to live forever in this world? So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, no. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, if you don't give it up, can they do any more than kill you? Uthman radiallahu anhu says, no. He says, Ibn Umar, are they the ones who decide whether you go to paradise or hell? Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, no. He said, I do not think that you should take off a garment that Allah had given you to wear. He's telling Uthman not to give up the garment of Khalifa. So Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he tells him, do not do this. If you do this, it will become a sunnah. Anytime people want to come and they dislike the Khalifa, or they dislike the ruler, they have disagreements with them, they want to take him down, the Muslims will never live in peace. Uthman radiallahu anhu, during all this time, all this is happening, what we need to know is that he knows, Uthman radiallahu anhu, in his heart, he knows that this day is coming. This was the promise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that this is a man who will face a great fitna. As this siege was taking place, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he hears them and he constantly hears these people of what they are, they, are, they are saying that we're going to get rid of Uthman. Uthman, he's not trustworthy anymore. Uthman is this, Uthman is that, Uthman. To the, to the instance where in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, they would get up and they would talk about him. And Uthman is listening, he's hearing what's happening. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he gets up and he reminds these people of his own virtues. He calls the people to the masjid and he tells them that if there's anyone who has witnessed what I'm going to say, then witness. He says, he starts off and he says that I was on the mountain of Hira when the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Uskun, calm down. فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكِ نَبِي أَوْ صديق أَوْ شَهِيد And Uthman was there. And the companions got up and they said, yes, we were there. And then he reminds them of Bay'at al-Ridwan. When they were going to Umrah, and the Prophet Sallallahu he took Bay'ah under the tree. He says, that didn't the Prophet Sallallahu take his hand and put it in his right and put it in his left and say that this is Bay'ah for Uthman. Because this is one of the things that they tried to disgrace him about. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, who witnessed the Prophet Sallallahu saying that whoever expands the masjid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expand for him a house in the Jannah. 
And Uthman says, and I went and I bought the land next to the masjid from my own wealth and I gave it for the sake of Allah. The companions again, they got up and they said that yes, we witness O Uthman. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, wasn't I the one whom the Prophet sallallahu when he asked who will give in charity to prepare the army of Tabuk, Jaysh al-Usra, who was there when the Prophet sallallahu he says that whoever gives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today, it will be accepted 100% with Allah and Uthman radiallahu anhu. The, the, the books, they say that he was the one who prepared half the army of Jaysh al-Usra. Uthman radiallahu anhu, there was a well in which a man, he would not let the poor people drink from. Uthman said, wasn't I the one who bought it and I gave it away for the sake of Allah. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he continued and he continued to, to remind them of his virtues so that they might wake up to themselves. And even though he was saying this, they get up and they say, what? You have changed. That was when the Prophet was around. Now you've changed. Now you've become untrustworthy. Now you're not spreading the wealth in the proper way. Now you're this, now you're that. So Uthman radiallahu anhu says, Wallahi, by Allah, I have never committed zina. La, not in jahiliya, not in Islam. And I would not wish to change my religion if I was given the wealth of this dunya to go back to kufr. And he says, my hand, my right hand has never touched my private part since I have given bay'ah to the Prophet. And I was the one who was married to two of his daughters, one of which passed away. When she passed away, the Prophet ﷺ married him to his other daughter. And he says that there is not a Friday prayer in, unless I what I give up or I buy a slave and I give it away for the sake of Allah every single Friday. If I miss one Friday, then I'll do two in the next Friday. And the virtues continue and continue and continue. With Uthman radiallahu anhu. As subhanallah, these are people that it's like talking to a brick wall. The brick wall probably is better. But they reach the stage where that's it. There is no turning back. Uthman radiallahu anhu, after the siege, has taken place for a couple of weeks and he's entering and he's exiting from his house he's praying the Jum'ah he's leading the prayer he delivers his last khutbah to the companions and to the people of fitna he starts by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this world as a means of seeking the hereafter he has not given you this world for you to be content with it. This world is transient, meaning it's going to end, but the hereafter will abide forever. He's reminding them of the akhirah. This world will come to an end and your destiny will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi Allah may he be glorified and exalted, for fear of him is a shield and protection against his wrath and punishment. Adhere to the main body of the Muslims and do not break into fractions. Stick to the jama'ah. Stick to the group of the Muslims. And then he mentions the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, grab hold, all of you, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not break up into fraction. And remember the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you were enemies. When the Prophet sallallahu came to Medina, there were enemies. Al-Aws wal Khazraj, the two tribes. Wars would go on for 40 years between them. So remember the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you were enemies and he bring your hearts closer and you became with this ni'mah brothers in Islam and you were on the edge of hellfire and he saved you from this Uthman radiallahu anhu he says O people of Medina I bid you farewell 
I trust you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah to appoint a good Khalifa for after I am gone. By Allah, I shall not enter upon anyone again after this day. This is the last khutbah of Uthman. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets his decree come to pass. I shall leave these rebels outside the door and I shall not give them anything that they might use against you in religious or worldly terms until Allah decrees whatever he wills. He commanded the people of Medina to leave and swore an oath urging them to do so. Don't come near my house. Don't try and help me. Don't try and fight. So everyone left except for the main companions who stuck with him. And as soon as Uthman, he finished this. I feel we'll use and I will never see you again. He knew that the end was, was close. And he entered into his house and he closed the door. And he took an oath from the companions and he told them that whoever accepts my order upon them and recognizes me as the Amir, recognizes that they have to obey, then no one should defend, take out their sword, fight for my sake. So the main companions, Talha was Zubair, Ali, Abu Huraira, the main companions in Medina, they listened, but they couldn't just stand there and do nothing. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he tells his two sons, Al Hassan and Hussein, to stand guard. Zubair ibn al Awam, he sends his son Abdullah ibn Zubair to go and to stand guard. Talha ibn Ubaidullah, he sends his son Muhammad to go and to stand guard. And the other companions send their sons as well. So a little group of companions, of young companions, they went and they were standing guard in front of the house of Uthman. And Uthman did not know. Uthman was in his house. After all this took place and Uthman entered into his house, as we mentioned that the armies, if Uthman sent for them to come, then they were getting closer. They were getting closer to Medina and news came that they were not far away. And the people from Hajj had finished Hajj and they have heard what has happening and they are finishing quickly. They were leaving Mecca and going back to Medina. So all these people were coming back to Medina and they hadn't reached the result yet. The people of Fitna, they were still stuck. Uthman's not accepting to give up the Khilafah and the people are getting closer. And as soon as these people get back to Medina, khalas, that's it. These 3,000 or more, they will stand no chance in front of the people who are coming back. And the people were coming back and they knew that they were coming back to fight these people. That's why the people of the Fitna, they said, لا يخرجنا مما وقعنا فيه إلا قتل هذا الرجل that's the only way for us to get out. Why people will be busy in that issue so we can slip away. Even during that time when he was left in his house, when he secluded himself in his house, they went to the extent where they cut off any food and water from entering into his house. And I only mention this is because Ali radiallahu anhu, as soon as he heard this, he went to them and he said, the, the Romans and the Persians do not even do this to their prisoners. How can you do this to the Khalifa? So they told Ali anhu to go away. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he takes off his amama and he throws it into the house of Uthman. As a sign that he heard what has happened and he tried. Even to the extent where the, the news reached who Im Habiba is the sister of Muawiyah, who was the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu she heard of this and she herself, she went on her camel, on her horse and she covered, she put water and she covered herself. And she was going to, and she's related to Uthman, the all from the Bani Umayyah. So she went straight away and they even caught her and they stopped her. And one of the men who were there, he slapped the camel or whatever she was riding and the camel ran away. And if the companions did not stop her then, she was going to fall off the camel. And she is who? She is the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu the mother of the believers. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he had a dream. 
and he started to tell his family because his family was still in the house. He told his family, today is the day that I will die. Then he said, I saw the Prophet in my dream and with him was Abu Bakr and Umar. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Uthman, Ya Uthman, you will break your fast today with us. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he knew. And he woke up that day and he was fasting. As we mentioned, the companions were outside the house. The sons of the companions, Hassan and Hussein, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubayr, uh, Muhammad ibn Talha, and many other young companions. So a clash happened between them. And the battle went on. And as soon as Uthman heard what was happening, he yelled out his door, stop and do not fight anymore and go home. The companions, they listened. Al Hassan radiallahu anhu, he was injured. Muhammad ibn Talha was injured. Some of the companions were injured. So they listened and they went. But there was one person who stayed. Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu. He was a warrior. He, after everyone left, as some narrations they say, he stayed. And he hid in the garden of the house of Uthman. And the people of Fitna, they saw him there. So they said, if it was anyone else, he would have entered. This is Abdullah ibn Zubayr. He was known, they, they feed him. So what they did, they lit the outskirts of the house, they lit it on fire. And the roof that was covering the garden, they lit it all on fire to get Abdullah ibn Zubayr to get him out. As soon as they did this, the house of Uthman was, was uncovered. And there was nothing separating between the people of Fitna and between Uthman. The people of Fitna started to enter upon Uthman radiallahu anhu. We said he was fasting. And his wife, Naila, she says that the Quran did not leave his hand that day. If he was not reading the Quran, he was in Salat. He knew his day had come. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he's sitting down and he's reading the Quran and the men started to enter upon him. And he has in his house, he has slaves. He has his wife, Naila. He has his children. So one man, he enters into the window and Uthman stops him. And he says, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have kids and women in here. You want to come in, you come in through the front door. You don't come in through the window. And this man, he got shaken by the words of Uthman. He put his head down and he walked away. Now some narrations mention that Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr entered upon the house of Uthman. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum had caught up on this of course. There were many attempts to make the Sahaba fight with one another. Uthman radiallahu anhu had sent Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Muhammad the son of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was a companion. Had sent him to Egypt to relieve uh, Abdullah bin Sa'ad ibn Abi Sarh from his position in Egypt. So they had written, they had forged a letter, forged a signature. They had forged one saying for them to be dealt with. In another letter they forged, they said they forged it, that it was written by Aisha. That Aisha had said and calling out to go against Uthman. And many other things they tried to do to create what? Fitna amongst the Sahaba. When he entered upon Uthman and he saw Uthman radiallahu anhu and he even grabbed him grabbed hold of the beard of Uthman. He says, Oh, the son of my brother, you have grabbed hold of a beard your father used to honor. Your father honored this beard. Your father honored him, yani Uthman. And he knew the virtue and the position of Uthman. At that split second, Muhammad Abu Bakr froze. And it's like that, that cover that was over his eyes that made him fall into the fitna was unveiled. And he sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he sought the forgiveness of Uthman and he left. Other narrations mention that as he was leaving, he tried to fight off those who were entering. But he wasn't able to fight them. He wasn't able to push them away. And the wife of Uthman testifies to that. Ali radiallahu anhu, he asked the wife of Uthman, Naila, he says, was 
Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr present? He says, yes, but he entered and then he left and he tried to fight off those who were entering. So he was asked later, what happened? He said, he reminded me of my father and he reminded me of his own virtue with Rasulullah. Another man came in and Uthman radiallahu anhu, he looked at him and he says, between me and you is the Quran, the book of Allah. This man as well, he put his head down and he turned around and he went. Another man entered and he says, you are from the tribe of such and such. He said, yes. He said, you are not the one who is going to kill me. This man said, why? He said, because the Prophet sallam, he made dua for your tribe. So this man as well, he turned around and he walked away. Until one man entered, whose nickname was al Mawtul Aswad. Black death, as they call him. This man, he entered into upon Uthman and he did not care about anything. And the narrations say that he grabbed his neck and he choked him. He choked Uthman. He says, when I grabbed the neck of Uthman before I hit him with my sword, he said, I had never touched a neck or skin as soft as the skin of Uthman. And Uthman radiallahu anhu, while he's being choked, this man, he comes and he hits Uthman with the sword. And Uthman radiallahu anhu, he has the Quran in front of him. And the correct narrations, they say that as soon as he was hit with the sword, the blood came on which verse? فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمْ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you against them. And he is the all hearer, the all knower. And when he hit him, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he put his hand up and he put his hand up. He said, by Allah, this is a hand, the first hand to ever write the Quran. Another report says that the first person to hit Uthman because the narrations say that they continued to hit him. But the narrations say that the first person who struck, his name was Ruman al-Yamani. During all this altercation, but Uthman radiallahu anhu, he told his slaves to not interfere. And if you don't interfere, then you are free for the sake of Allah. When they saw what happened, when they saw how they attacked him, they went out and they fought. His wife Na'ila, the wife of Uthman, when they came to strike him as well, she put her hand out trying to protect him and her fingers were cut off. When the slaves saw this as well, that person who did that, one of the slaves went up and was able to Uthman radiallahu anhu, there's even a narration, wallahi, there's even a narration where they say that Al-Ghafiqi, he was the leader of the Egyptian. They say that Al-Ghafiqi, he came and at the end he started to jump on the chest of Uthman radiallahu anhu while he was dead. It didn't end there. Those who were in the house of Uthman, the ones who attacked him, they ransacked and they stole everything that was in the house of Uthman. And then they headed towards the treasury, Bayt al-Mal and Muslimin, the treasury, and they attacked the treasury and they took everything in the treasury and they fled. And on this day, which was the 18th of the Hijjah, in the year 35 after the Hijrah, this was the day in which, and it was said that it was on a Friday. And there's a lot of narrations that say that he was left for three days without being washed. He was left and no one prayed on him. This is all lies. He was washed the same day, the same night, and he was taken out at night between Maghrib and Isha, and he was buried in Al Baqir. Correct, or most correct narration states that Zubair ibn al Awam, he was the one who prayed. Salatul Janazah on him. And another narration says that Marwan ibn al-Hakam, he was his cousin, his first and his closest of family ties that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he had. But the main thing is that the same night, Uthman radiallahu anhu was prayed and washed upon by the Muslims. This is the story of the death of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And the fitna that happened after Uthman was the greatest fitna that before the Muslims. And the death of Uthman was the opening for this fitna to start. And this is something that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he foresaw. He knew that this was going to happen. 
But at the same time, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he knew that his ending was going to be by death. And he accepted and he knew that this was going to happen. In the books of history, they mentioned that every single companion who was in Medina at that time, how they got up and they wanted to defend Uthman radiallahu anhu. Even the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers, even the Sahabiyat, the female companions themselves, they got up and they wanted to fight for Uthman radiallahu anhu. So all the companions were in agreement. Uthman radiallahu anhu, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and grant him the highest of levels in Jannah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for any shortcomings that I have done with regards to the story of Uthman, because as much as I speak, I can never give Uthman what he deserves.